Yo, what up guys, I'm Sammy and welcome back to the Soul Drop and this is my performance review of the Kobe 8 and Kobe 11 and Kobe 9 combined. Now this is a brand new shoe, brand new company. Uh, the company is called Serious Player Only and this shoe is called the Player One. It retails for 160 bucks and you, you can't tell me they didn't get a little bit of inspiration from Kobe's, right? And uh, they do admit it. Um, they say they got a lot of inspiration from Kobe's. I don't really know how I feel about that 100%, but I do love Kobe's and we haven't really seen a lot of shoes that look like Kobe's and also perform, I guess perform like Kobe's that there's a couple, but look like Kobe's, not really, right? So I guess I am happy about that. Um, but yeah, we, Nike, give us more Kobe's. We pro show some more shoes, please, or retro them. Like, you know, every give the people what they want. Don't you guys want money? People are gonna buy the, anyways, I'm sorry. Uh, but yeah, if you guys do wanna come up, I'll try to leave a link in the description box. But let's get to start off with the Traccione. So the Traction is its own unique design, kind of. Right, so it's kind of a mix of herringbone and also like super duper thin and very small nubbies in between the herringbone, right? So the traction overall is really, really good. I was pretty damn surprised, right? Uh, you don't need to break it in. That was actually good pretty much right out the box. Very, very nice bite on a clean court, right? That also has a little bit of a squeak, not super loud, not super high pitched, but has a nice squeak twitch, which of course is Nice, you know, it has nothing to do with performance, but I like to have a nice loud squeak, right? Um, and also uh, for dust, it picks up pretty minimal dust. As you guys can see, um, like, I guess the, the herringbone traction, like the lines are kind of spaced apart. And I guess the nubs are small enough to like where it doesn't trap a lot of dirt or debris. Right, but I feel like you know it's biting through dust very, very well. It's I, I'm guessing it's because the rubber is super soft as well. So maybe it like moves with the movement of your foot a little bit better and grips the floor better because of that. I'm guessing that's it because you know if you look at, uh, there's like little pebbles stuck in, <laughs> in between like the nubs. It's kind of weird, but anyways, uh, it, it was very good performance on dust as well. So I would actually say this is like a top tier traction, which is great, but. But durability is not great, you know? Uh, the rubber is so damn soft, especially, you know, like right here, uh, where the ball of your foot is, this is a very high wear area. I wish they would have made this like solid or something or like use harder rubber, but uh, I mean, it wasn't terrible. I, it's actually a lot better than I thought it would be because I, I thought that, you know, even from indoor use, this would start ripping off just a tiny bit, but um, it's actually holding up okay you know pretty well but well, better than i thought but it's still not great for durability right so just be careful on that and definitely do not play with these shoes outdoors but if you're playing on an indoor court it has actually very very good traction which is great uh also in the middle of the outsole we can see a carbon fiber mifid chain plate that's a very very nice touch very similar to of course the kobe 8 I like the the overall design is super similar right but it's just like the pattern the outsole pattern is is different, right, from the Kobe 8. But anyways, there's a traction. As far as the heel to toe transition goes, it feels very similar to the Kobe 11. If you look at the actual outsole, look at that. Right? And the heel as well, right? super duper similar, right? Uh, so we have just rubber, right? And it is a drop in midsole. So um, here in the heel, it's a little clunky, right? It's not really smooth. It is a little rounded, which makes it a little bit better than if it was like super squared off. Um, but still not my favorite. And also that was the thing I didn't really like all too much in the Kobe 11. Uh, it just made it a little clunky in the heel. Nothing terrible, nothing like I hated, but it's just, I, I wish it was a little bit more rounded or something like that. And then here in the forefoot, we have a nice rounded shape and also a lot and a lot of forefoot flex, right? And uh, not a whole lot of rebound back. I feel like they should have kept the carbon fiber, uh, like made it a little bit longer, you know? Um, but you know, there's a lot and a lot of forefoot flex, but torsion support was pretty damn good for me. So overall heel to toe transition was eh, right? Now moving on to the cushioning setup. So we do have a drop in, right? Drop in missile, as you guys can see. And uh, it's actually very, very nice. You know, uh, it's a lot softer and a lot more resilient than Lunalon, right? So all the Kobe's with the drop-in midsoles pretty much have a drop-in Lunalon midsole. And Lunalon is very, very nice at first, but it bottoms out very quickly. 
And uh, once it bottoms out, it hurts. You know, impact protection is terrible um, and it hurts my feet a lot, especially doing very, very hard impacts, right? Uh, so yeah, and also uh, this drop-in missile feels maybe a tad bit thicker than the Cubbies, which definitely is not a bad thing. So the first thing that I love about drop-in missiles, especially with this pattern, right? You guys can see like little nubs there. And also this texture of foam, it kind of like grabs your sock and keeps your foot and sock in place. That feels really, really nice, right? Also, I'll touch on this a little bit, but you know, we have a sidewall, right? So that's very, very good for lateral containment. It'll help keep your foot into like the midsole, right? Or into the shoe. Uh, so they're calling this foam Evanlon, Evanlon. You know, it's a interesting name, but step in comfort also is very, very nice. You know, your foot is pretty much right on top of this foam. And you know, traditional shoes that don't use drop-ins, they have strobo boards and strobo boards are usually super duper stiff. It's very glued down. So this is also another plus of having a drop-in midsole, right? And also on the bottom, we have a bottom loaded units, you know, like basically like this looks like, like boost a little bit and they're calling it popcorn. Right, we have it here in the forefoot and then one here in the heel. And then more targeted foam, this is like a softer foam. Uh, they're calling it gum, right? So you can definitely feel that it's softer here in the forefoot and here in the heel. So impact protection also was pretty good. So this overall cushioning setup is great. Impact protection, I wouldn't say is the best ever though. Like if you're looking for really, really good impact protection, uh, if you're jump jumping a lot, you're super heavy or something like that, or you're older, then obviously, I don't know, a setup like the LeBron 20 is gonna be better or the KD15 Cosmic Unities, but it was adequate impact protection for me and also like my feet didn't hurt that much. So overall, this is a great cushioning setup. You have great core feel, impact protection is adequate for me, good step in comfort and underfoot cushioning. Um, and yeah, just felt great overall, super responsive ride too. So uh, I had pretty much zero problems with this cushioning setup. And now moving on to the material. So they're calling this the Nerve Knit material and it reminds me a little bit of Fly Knit, which is nice, right? You can see the individual yarns kind of going across this upper and it's a mix of like yarn and like, I guess like, like a knit material kind of, right? And you can see through, look at that. You can see through this material, it's just a super duper thin uh, upper, which feels nice, especially here in the forefoot. Uh, it conforms your foot really, really well. And overall, it's like pretty supportive, right? I wouldn't say it's like the most supportive material, like hyperfuse or leather or anything like that, but it's still like overall supportive. I didn't really have any issues with that. And also uh, around the tip of the toe, we have some fuse for extra durability and support, you know, for toe drags and stuff like that. It stays really, really thin, right? It's actually tran like tr transparent. Right, And then for the tongue, we have very minimal padding. And also it's like, not a, it's like a quarter booty construction. You know, half booty constructions, they kind of go down here, but then the tongue kind of comes all the way into here a little bit, but that still helps to keep the tongue in place and also improves the fit a little bit better. And then <laughs> here in the ankle area, there's literally zero padding, like just on top, just a tiny bit and it uh, reminds me a lot of the kobe's you know and that's so weird though you know what i mean like kobe's have such such good heel lockdown kobe 8 kobe 11 you know what i mean and uh, i'm guessing it's because it kind of cups if you look at the actual make of the uh the ankle area it kind of cups in like this like this instead of just going straight up and down so because of the minimal padding uh, they probably had to make it like that, but that's also that improves like heel lockdown. But anyways, materials feel very nice, especially on foot. I had zero issues with it. If you want something more cozy, like more comfortable, cozy with a lot of foam and stuff like that, then obviously this is a, a terrible option. But <laughs> if you want something super thin and minimal, something that conforms to your foot very well, but also I had zero issues with sport, uh, then this is a great option. As far as durability of the materials go, it doesn't seem like it'll be that durable though. Um, I mean, I haven't had any issues personally for me, but just uh, like, it's just, just a really thin material. So I don't know how durability is gonna be. So uh, take that with a grain of salt, but just be careful on that. Moving on to the fit. Yeah, everybody, everybody go up half a size. I went true to size in this and it fits really, really short. And that's one reason why I didn't like playing in it because it hurt my toes and it hurt my feet. You know what I mean? So I wish I would have gone up half a size. And I feel like if I went up half a size, it still would have been like, my toes would have been right to the edge, right? It's actually like my toes are scrunching up. So if you want a super snug fit, then go up half a size, 
if you want a little bit more relaxed fit or you have a chonky, wide, thick foot or something, probably go up a full size, you know what I mean? Because yeah, this is a really short and very tight uh, fitting shoe, especially here in the toe box. Here in the toe box, it's not super duper snug though, uh, but it is a quite, it's quite a snug fit. And then also width wise, it is slightly narrow. So yeah, uh, I would suggest everyone goes up half a size. So there's the fit there. Moving on to the support and lockdown, also really, really good. So like I mentioned before, the drop in midsole has that sidewall, right? And then of course, here on like the outer shell, like the material, we have this fuse and also the rubber outsole coming up, acting in the sidewall just a tiny bit here in the forefoot. And then here in the heel, we have this external heel counter, which feels like it's a, it's a little bit of a copy of the Kobe 8, you know, heel counter, right? But it's not a bad thing, I guess, you know, it, Kobe 8's iconic, it's a great shoe. So for lateral containment, I was good to go. And I feel like even if you're a bigger guy doing super shifty lateral movements, you should be good in the player one as well. And also lateral stability was good. You know, you have a little bit of an outrigger right here. You're low to the ground here in the forefoot and it's a wide base. So lateral stability for me was great too. And I had zero issues, like I said before, with heel slippage. My foot felt super locked into the shoe as well. And also another added bonus is that the foam is very sticky. You know, just like the Lunalon, you know, kind of keeps your foot in place like I mentioned before. So I really, really like the texture of that as well. Moving on to the weight of the shoe. Probably gonna be light. I don't think it's as light as the Kobe's though, because the Kobe 8s are super duper light. But yeah, the um, the player one is 10.34 ounces, super duper light. Let's check the other shoe. 10.02 ounces, right? So yeah, extremely, extremely light. Uh, and let's check the Kobe 11 actually. 10.3. Yeah, oh, it's actually around the same weight as the Kobe 11, but the Kobe 8 is like 9. No, 8.43 ounces. Holy crap. That's crazy. And they're pro throwing this shoe next year, supposedly. So I'm super excited about that. But anyways, yeah, it's an extremely minimal feeling shoe, extremely lightweight. You feel very quick and responsive when you're playing in it. And I really like how it feels. You know, I just wish it wasn't as clunky here in the heel, but that's just a little minor thing for me. Just I'm nitpicking at that point, but overall it feels great on foot and I really enjoy playing it. And now moving on to the ventilation. Yeah, it's freaking really, really good. I mean, air goes right through this material and it's like not only in the toe box, it's literally on the lateral side here, on the medial side here, and uh, I guess the tongue as well. Like there's a yeah, there's like air perforations. I don't know if you guys can see it because it's like a black material, but there's perforations in there. So yeah, ventilation is great in the shoe. So that's a good thing. And aesthetically, I love it. You know, it's a mix of the Kobe 11, right? This rubber part looks very similar to the Kobe 11. And then of course we have the heel counter. And I guess the upper is like its own unique thing, kind of. Um, but yeah, so it, it's a great looking shoe. I actually wonder if it would look amazing with a Nike swoosh, you know. But anyways, uh, tell us what you guys think of the aesthetics down in the comment section below. So wrapping things up. Yeah, it's it's a great shoe. It's a really, really nice performer. Traction is really good. Cushion is very, very nice. Actually an upgrade from the Lunalon. I'm dropping Lunalon in the Kobe's. A material super thin, it's lightweight, it's responsive, you know, it plays pretty much like the Kobe 9 or the Kobe 11, you know what I mean? 160 bucks is a little steep, especially for a first shoe, but I guess you're getting good tech. I mean, the cushion, the foam that they're giving you is actually very, very nice. And then of course we got carbon fiber, we got the knit material. Uh, so I feel like, you know, tech wise, they did a good job in delivering for the price. And of course, performance is also up there. It's a super, super nice shoe. So yeah, if you liked playing in any Kobe's, Kobe 8, Kobe 9, Kobe 11, specifically with the drop-ins, you will love this shoe. And I love that they're making this shoe. And yeah, I feel like a lot of you guys will enjoy the shoe as I have. Of course, just be careful on the fit. I might have to cop another pair and go up half a size, you know what I mean? Um, but anyways, that about concludes my review of the Serious Player Only Player 1. Again, if you guys do want to cop, I try to leave a link in the description box, but that's it. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.